All right. So once the application is determined to be complete, that is what signals the beginning of the scoping process, which my impression would be that's probably why most of you came tonight, is to really ratchet in on this. What scoping is, you, I'll read this out loud and then walk through a few things. Receive public comments, decide what factors to analyze and what geographic areas to consider. The co-lead agencies ask other agencies, the tribes, and the public to comment on what the EIS should analyze for the project. Examples of possible factors to consider include stormwater, wetlands, air emissions, noise, traffic, rail traffic, vessel traffic. After considering comments, the lead agencies decide what should be included in the EIS. So I want to expand on this now. For scoping, what is it? You know, we keep use, I keep using this term over and over, scoping and waiting for scoping and starting scoping. Okay, De what it is that it determines the focus or the scope of the subsequent subsequent review. What needs to be included in that all-important document, the environmental impact statement? It invites the public, the agencies, and the tribes to comment. The agencies do not just decide on their own what should be in this environmental impact statement. We take very seriously, and we must, the input that is provided by all of you. Uh, Scoping identifies the impacts to consider the alternatives and reasonable mitigation measures, and identify specific studies, surveys, and methodologies for analysis. For example, I'm already getting input from organizations and people to saying, make sure to include this study. Have you looked at this? Those are the kinds of things we'll be interested in. Okay, the pathway for scoping. For SEPA, the county ecology will issue our determination of significance is a DS and the scoping notice. It's issued by the co-leads. That starts scoping. When that happens, we are going to indicate the dates, the times, the locations for the public scoping meetings. So those are the meetings you're gonna, going to want to be keeping an eye on. And the handout that was provided has a, has a website, and I think it's important to note, if you go to, don't go to the county website, you can be asked to put on the notification list. It will have your email. So when that's happening, you will get an email notification saying scoping has started and the information that will be provided. And then what that enables is for you to also become, through, through an, another step, a, a party of record. So that will be important if you want your own notification of when this happens. Naturally, our public information officers, the agencies, we will try to notify the public as much as possible through all the avenues we have with you know, television, radio, newspaper, all of that. The determination of significance normally includes, you're probably thinking, well, what is it? Is it just a piece of paper that says we've, we've begun? No. It will have a description of the project, the list of the alternatives to be reviewed. And those alternatives can be added to. They can be changed, but that's what we're going to be putting out. And then what elements of the environment should be researched for the project? For NEPA, getting to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, their document has a little bit of a different name. It is a notification of intent for EIS to start and what they call a special public notice. Same thing, telling you dates, times, locations. It normally includes description of project. It also will identify what federal cooperating agencies, what agencies will work with them to provide their expertise and input. Scoping comments. What kind of comments are useful to the agencies during scoping? So this is an important part. What we want you to do is be, you'll be looking at what came out in that DIS and, and the core uh, document. 
we need identification of probable impacts that should be considered in the EIS. What mitigation measures could be taken that could reduce or eliminate adverse impacts for the proposal? And suggest alternatives to the proposal that should be considered. So, I mean, we try to think of a lot of things for what should be included. We rely on you and the agencies and the tribes to help us further expand upon that to produce an exceptional EIS. And then suggesting methods of analysis that should be used. I forgot that one last line. It's a key one. What should be analyzed and how should it be analyzed? Commenting allows you identify, clarify, and resolve concerns early. And I think for you, many of it will be identify concerns. You want us to hear loud and clear what your concerns are. Uh, could influence design changes, achieve more environmentally sound proposals, improve inf environmental information in SEPA and NEPA documents, and very critical, last but not least, this is a written record. So that kind of documentation is, is very critical. All right. So once this DS comes out and scoping begins, the public comment period will be 30 to 60 days. We've combined the regulations for the federal regulations for NEPA, the SEPA regulations. So you'll have a time period that's within that time frame. The public scoping meetings will be in a variety of locations. We, at a minimum, have to provide three. There may be a number more. Comments. You can provide comments at these public scoping meetings. I do want to say they are not public hearings. Uh, that distinction may uh, strike you as what's so important about that. Sometimes people think these meetings are hearings, but you, people have the opportunity to get up to the microphone and provide input. But also, written comments can be sent by hard copy, email, and online to the agencies. You don't need to do both. You do, you know, if you want to, that's great. But you do not have to come in person and then also provide uh, uh, written comments. <clears throat> 